This program is brought to you by Kibernet, Teledyne Oil and Gas, EMAS, Control Cutter, and IV Offshore. You were very positive about the impacts of unconventionals on um, oil markets. Uh, can you give us any further detail on Aramco's plans? You had mentioned uh, in yeah. two to three years maybe bringing on additional shale reserves. Yeah, uh, Specifically within Saudi Arabia, we're quite busy with our unconventional program. We have three different areas addressing shale, uh, resources, gas primarily is what we're targeting, uh, tight uh, gas in some areas as well as some sand channels which are very un unconventional from a structure and a reservoir standpoint. Although their productivity is very high but they decline very quickly so we're classifying them as unconventional. Collectively uh, these resources uh, will give us substantial volumes in due, in due course uh, in time, uh, two to three thousand uh, a billion standard cubic feet per day uh, when we uh, bring them all up but that's going to take years to develop so within within the short to intermediate term we're targeting first uh, the northern region of the kingdom which has both the shale as well as the sand channels i discussed earlier and we have a number of rigs there drilling we've drilled uh, many wells and uh, but we're not uh, producing them uh, yet because we don't have the infrastructure to collect the gas and we don't want to be flaring so once we have the pipelines built which will take a couple of years we will uh, take the gas to a power plant in the area and ultimately uh, this development will fuel a major mining uh, venture that we have uh, up north for phosphate and a phosphate based industry so that's step number one, then ultimately we'll come south within our area of operation and develop more uh, of, of the shared resources there and the tight gas that we have. I also addressed in my remarks or an answer to a question, at the global level, shale oil has been a blessing at many fronts. First of all, the you know two to three million barrels that have come up over the last few years have been uh, key to offsetting the disruptions that have taken place uh, within the Middle East and North Africa and has kept uh, prices from escalating to levels that the global market wouldn't be able to withstand post-financial crisis. Uh, you know, on the other hand, it has reduced the pressure on other countries uh, that uh, didn't really need to produce more oil from a fiscal standpoint that there was no pressure and I'm talking specifically uh, Saudi Arabia is we're able to meet the call in Saudi Arabia we're able to maintain our spare capacity and the US has been able to lift I think another good thing with with uh, shale oil uh, is the fact that it's expensive and it can be quickly turned on and turned off and that gets programmed into financial markets and therefore it establishes a floor on oil prices. It is the marginal barrel and it's highly elastic with prices. So I think it has provided support for oil prices which has allowed further investment in other resources as well like offshore, like deep sea here uh, in Norway uh, and in the continental shelf. So it's been a blessing I think indirectly for Norway through the market mechanism that that it has established of having this relatively narrow band of prices keeping a lead on prices from going up but at the same time establishing a floor so that's my view on uh, unconventionals and, and shale in the US and you mentioned offshore um, can you update us on Aramco's offshore uh, efforts and yes. specifically um, we're seeing costs creep up here in Norway and that's impacting investment. Are you seeing similar trends where you're drilling? Well we have two, uh, we have developments, uh, sizable developments offshore uh, on the east side in the Arabian Gulf, uh, both growing and maintaining our substantial oil production from offshore fields. Uh, you know, many, many platforms are being installed every year with 
with pipelines, subsea pipelines, uh, electrification of these platforms uh, as we increase production and as some of the fields mature. But we're also having grassroots developments uh, in, in, uh, in the offshore for gas. We have three major projects, uh, Karan, which came on stream last year, 2 billion standard cubic feet per day during a 12-month ramp-up period. Starting in December, January of this year, we will start producing uh, the Arabia Hasba. These are two fields, major fields uh, in the Gulf. The combined production feeding a new plant called Wasat gas plant that is nearing completion is 3 billion standard cubic feet per day. We're also in the early development of a new gas plant called Fadli gas plant, which will be fed from another increment from Hasba, another billion standard cubic feet per day. So you put it in total, it's about six billion standard cubic feet per day from three major giant gas uh, reservoirs that, that we have discovered, or fields that we have discovered are and, and, and are well advanced in developing and producing them. Has it been uh, expensive to develop? Yes, but we've been able to mitigate it by bringing in some advanced technologies, for example, Arabia and Hasba. We brought what we call uh, large bore wells. They are the largest of their type, allowing us to flow some of these wells uh, up to 400 uh, million standard cubic feet per well. So that's allowing us to reduce the number of wells reduce the number of platforms, reduce the pipeline uh, network uh, in the offshore field, but it has also required us to do two things. Number one, develop technologies that did not exist and work with the supplier industry to develop new tools, new products, new uh, Christmas trees that, that are going in on, on these large wells, and new completions uh, for these. And they're high temperature, high pressure, by the way, so they're not easy uh, fields to uh, to produce but it has also required us to take risk you have to take risk you cannot break paradigms and do things differently without taking risk and our technology developers our petroleum engineers uh, have been uh, bold and we have supported them as uh, the management of Saudi Aramco and taken those calculated risks which has allowed us to bring the cost down from what it would have been. But despite these efforts, costs are up. Costs are up. What is costing us today to develop a barrel of oil or uh, you know, a BTU of gas is easily twice what it was 10 years ago. And I think part of that is the supply chain bottlenecks. We have been going through an expansionary phase in, in, in our industry, uh, and that has stretched some of the suppliers. And what we need to do is call on our suppliers to invest for the long term. We're, the industry is going to be here for decades and generations to come. And, and we need a, a robust, strong supply industry, whether it's the shipyards, whether it's the fabrication yards, whether it's the APC contractors, uh, the service companies. Uh, they all need to build capacity and be uh, with us for the long term. They, they need the assurance from us that we have the workload, and I, I am giving them that assurance from Saudi Aramco's side, and I think all other operators need to do the same so that our partners uh, also invest in their own uh, capacity.